Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ima ba'd Ayyul Ahbab, continue on our study of the abridged Shara Sunnah li Imam Baba Hari rahimahullah ta'ala As we last mentioned about the the foundation of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah is uh, the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum meaning that they are the Jama'ah they are the uh, they form the jama'ah of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. It's the Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and what they believe in their minhaj, their aqidah, their creed, um, their suluk. That they were the companions of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Qali Imam Baba Hari rahimahullah taala wal asas ala di tubna alaihi al jama'ah wa hum ashab Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa rahimahum Allah ajma'in. وهم أهل السنة والجماعة فمن لم يأخذ عنهم فقد ضل وابتدع وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة من أهلها في النار قال so the foundation upon which the جماعة is built upon is the companions of Muhammad may Allah سبحانه وتعالى mercy be upon all of them they are أهل السنة والجماعة so whoever does not take from them has gone astray and innovated and who every innovation is misguidance, and misguidance and his people are in the fire. Shaykh Rabi mentions about this. Hafiz Allah Ta'ala qal, Al-Asas aladhi tubna alayhi al-jama'ah huwa kitab Allah wa sunnat al-Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sunnat al-Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the foundation on which the jama'ah is built upon is the book of Allah. And the Sunnah of His Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. وَخَيْرٌ وَخَيْرٌ مَنْ تَلْزَمَ الْتَلْزَمُ بِكِتَابِ اللَّهِ وَسُنَّةِ رَسُولِهِ sallallahu alaihi wasallam هُمْ أَصْحَابَ مُحَمَّدٍ sallallahu alaihi wasallam فِي الْأَقَاعِدِ وَالْعِبَادَاتِ وَالْجِهَادِ وَالْعَمْرِ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَنَاهِيَ الْمُنْكَرِ وَفِي سَائِرِ الشَّوْنِ الْدِينِيَّةِ وَالدُّنْيَوِيَّةِ وَقَدْ أَثْنَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ وزكاهم وأخبر أنه رضي عنهم ورضوا عنه وهم خير أمة أخرجت للناس يأمرون بالمعروف وعلى رأسي التوحيد. شيخ ربي حفظ الله تعالى. He mentioned with regards to the statement of Imam Baba Hari explaining it, saying that the foundation on which the Jama'ah is built upon is the Book of Allah. And the Sunnah of His Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the best of those who adhered to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of His Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, is the companions of Muhammad, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, radiyallahu taala anhu majmaeen, in aqida, you know, in creed, in worship, in jihad, in commanding the good and forbidding the evil. And in all the other aspects of the religion and worldly affairs. And Allah has praised them and purified them. Uh, and said about them that He is pleased with them and that they are pleased with Him. And that they are the best of the nation or the best of the nations that were sent to the people to command the good. And at the head of that good, or the, the highest or the most important part of that good is Tawheed, is calling to Tawheed. So the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een, they fulfilled their duty in calling the kitab in Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alayhi wa sallam with the best understanding because they were there with the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam radiyallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een and Allah chose them as the companions to be companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they understood Tawheed they were able to ask questions about those things they didn't understand they were there with the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised them in the Qur'an Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned them and uh uh, said that he's pleased with them and that they are pleased with him. They are the mu'mineen. They are the the first believers. And they are the best of humanity after the the uh, 
the prophets alayhim after salatu salam and the messengers alayhim after salatu salam that the sahaba to rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam this is a part of our creed as muslims so whatever as a qaida from ahl sunnah that whatever sins that they may have fallen into we believe that they made toba from them before they died and that they were the best so we don't believe that the sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in were perfect that they didn't make mistakes or they didn't have any sins it's not the the aqeedah of ahl sunnah they weren't infallible but however we believe that they repented from any mistakes or any sins that they did for example look at the uh, the ahadith mentioning those uh, uh, the ghamidiya the woman from the uh, ghamidi tribe uh, that she had committed adultery you know and she uh, you know came to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam admitted her sins and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was trying to excuse her and make excuses for her and she has insisted on being uh, punished and that she what she did was wrong and, and to to verify about herself and so the prophet sallallahu alaihi even told her to go away and come back after you have the child you know after you have the child and after you have breastfed the child and she came back radiyallahu ta'ala anha and eventually she was stoned to death radiyallahu ta'ala anha and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned that her toba because she was sincere you know was enough to uh if i recall to spread around ahl uh, the the toba around ahl madina or something to this effect but basically showing us that she was a sahabi sahabia and that she repented although she had fallen into a major sin but she repented and her repentance was seer and we say radiyallahu ta'ala anha and we don't speak any ill of her and we love her for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has blessed her with jannat firdaus uh and the sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in they were for, first and foremost in tawhid because this is the da'wah of ahl sunnah this is the creed of ahl sunnah is that calling the tawhid this is what the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam ordered us with he he sent muadh ibn jabal radiyallahu ta'ala anhu to yemen and he told him that this is this is the call he said to muadh inna kitati qawman min ahli kitab fa yakun awla ma ta'dum ilayhi shahadat la ilaha illallah wa fi ruwaya an yuwahid allah that the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam sent muadh ibn jabal radiyallahu ta'ala anhu to teach his people who were from Ahl al-Kitab. He said, إِنَّكَ تَعْتِي قَوْمٍ مِنْ أَحْلِ الْكِتَابِ You're going to a people who are the people of the book, from the people of the book, meaning the Jews and the Christians. So make the first thing that you call them to is the shahada, is bearing witness that there's no God worthy of worship and that Muhammad is the last prophet and messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam. But it was tawheed, وَأَنْ يُوَحِدَ اللَّهُ And to worship Allah alone. So the Sahaba, رضي الله تعالى عنه مجمعين, they were first and foremost uh, in, in, in calling the Tawheed after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after Salatu Salam. And that they were, that this was their menhaj, this was their methodology. That they were do all of these acts of worship are to actualize Tawheed. They fulfill the divine purpose that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنْتِ لِلْعَابِدُونَ I have not created mankind and jinn except for the purpose of worshipping me. That our purpose here is to worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Our minhaj is tawheed. Our da'wah is to tawheed. Uh, that is what the asas of the jama'ah, that's why the sahaba, radiyallahu ta'ala ayam ajma'in, that they were first and foremost in commanding, يَعْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفُ وَيَنْهَوْنَا لَمُنْكَ That they commanded to the good and they forbid the, they forbid, forbade the evil. And from the foremost duties of calling to the good is calling to Tawheed. And that's the shahid. That's what the shaykh was saying here. Hafidhullah Ta'ala. Then he said, he said, وَيَنْهَوْنَا عَنَ الْمُنْكَرْ وَعَلَى الرَّاسِ الْمُنْكَرَاتِ أَشْشِرْكْ وَالْبِدَعَ And he said that also that their duty and that, that the sahaba رضي الله تعالى عنهم أجمعين were called to and they were the best at was prohibiting uh, the, the munkar, the sinfulness, the wickedness. And the biggest or the greatest of the sins is shirk, is uh, calling to polytheism and bid'ah and uh, innovation, religious innovation and heresy. 
that these are some of the greatest sins. And the Sahaba مجمعين, since they were first and foremost that commanded the good and forbidding the evil, they were first and foremost to do in those greatest acts of commanding the good, which is calling the Tawheed, and the uh, of prohibiting the worst of sins, which is to uh, call to to commit shirk, and also bid'ah. Shirk, of course, being greater than bid'ah, and bid'ah, of course, can be divided into two types of bid'ah, as we've mentioned before, that you have bid'ah uh, mukaffara wa bid'ah ghayra mukaffara. The bid'ah mukaffara means the bid'ah or innovation that takes you out of the fold of Islam. And we mentioned that fairly extensively, uh, bringing some of the benefits from Sheikh Ahmed al-Najmi, and, and I think in dars number three, uh, three or four. And that the uh, the other type of bid'ah, so we said bid'ah mukaffara, which takes you out of the fold of Islam, bid'ah, which is uh, the heretical bid'ah, and bid'ah ghayra mukaffara, you know, innovation, religious innovation, that doesn't take you out of the fold of Islam, and it has various, various forms and various acts of worship, that is bid'ah, but that does not make the person, even if the person is a mubtadi'ah, or they have fallen into a bid'ah, because even there's a distinguishment there, not everyone who commits a bid'ah is a mubtadi'ah, and not everybody who falls into kufr is a disbeliever or kafir. So those are other uh, explanations, um, uh, details that possibly we'll get into in another part in the treaties, uh, if it uh, warrants doing so, but if you need more details about that, go to the speech of Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah regarding that, and the uh, rules about Nawaqid al-Islam and, and so forth, and I explained it extensively in many of my lectures in Nawaqid al-Islam and uh, other lectures about the issue of takfir. And so, along with that, as we said, that bid'ah is also a major sin, and it's a part of when you prohibit the evil by speaking against bid'ah, speaking about, against ahl bid'ah, that you are uh, you're commanding the good and you're forbidding evil by doing that because you're commanding the good telling them to follow the sunnah and urging the people to follow the sunnah and you're, command, and you're forbidding the evil you are warning against that bid'ah, that innovation warning against the people of innovation and this is something that is uh, a part of the methodology of the Salaf of this Ummah that is imperative for us to understand that this is a part of the minhaj of the Salaf of this Ummah. And I'm going to mention, uh, because the Sahaba, they were the first and foremost at this, and there's so much adilla from this. Let's, let's stick with that first before we get off uh, onto anything else. Uh, then the Shaykh mentioned also the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ يَشَافِكَ رُسُولًا مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيْنَ لَهُ الْهُدَى وَيَتَّبَعَ غَيْرَ سَبِيلَ مُؤْمِنِينَ نُوَلِّهِ مَا تَوَلَّى وَنُسْلِهِ جَهَنَّمْ وَسَاءَتْ مُصِيرًا In Surah An-Nisa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Whoever differs with the Messenger after uh, clear guidance has come to you know him and has been made clear, uh, and he follows other than the path of the believers, then we uh, will associate him with those who he associated with and loved, and we will roast him in Jahannam, in the hellfire, and what an evil destination. The Shaykh mentioned, he said, For whom Ridwan Allah alayhim kanu ala sirat mustaqim, multazimina kitabillah wa sunnat al rasulihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said that the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, that, uh, that they were upon the sirat mustaqim, they were upon the straight path. And the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he also goes on to explain, and we'll make this بالاختصار, that uh, regarding the ayat that he mentioned, that the uh, those people who differ, as, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ يَشَافِكَ رَسُولَ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيْنَ لَهُ هُدَى وَيَعْتَبِيَ غَيْرَ سُبِيلَ مُؤْمِنِينَ That those people who differ the path other than the believers, that those people are differing, the سُبِيلَ مُؤْمِنِينَ is the سُبِيلَ Sahaba. It is the path of the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in, because they were the, the first mu'mineen in this ummah. And they were the companions of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
and they were the best of the believers during the time of the Prophet ﷺ up until Yom Al-Qiyamah, aside from the Anbiya, the Prophets, and the Messengers ﷺ. So they were upon the Sabil al-Mu'mineen, and they formed the Sabil al-Mu'mineen, the path of the believers. Their minhaj, their aqidah, their creed, their methodology, their manners, all of those things make up the Sabil al-Mu'mineen. And then the Shaykh mentions another hadith of the Prophet uh, the Prophet, uh, the Prophet والسلام, the Shaykh mentioned the hadith of the Prophet والسلام, also as the deal that the Sahaba مجمعين, that they are to be followed and that they are the Sabil al-Mu'mineen that they are the Asl of the Jama'ah they are the Asl of Ahl Sunnati al-Jama'ah they form the foundation and they also uh, their path was the path of the, uh, of the believers because they called the Kitab Wasunnah and they adhered to Kitab Wasunnah and of their fadl of being companions of the Prophet Ali Salatu Salam Radiallahu Ta'ala Majmaeen. He mentioned the hadith, which we, we mentioned, and we mentioned probably almost every uh dars here. The hadith Fainuhumiya So whoever lives after me uh will see many differences. It's upon you, so it's upon you my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided Khalifa, and that's the uh, the shahid here. The main point of mentioning this hadith is because it's the deal to show that you must follow the the sunnah of the Prophet والسلام, and the rightly guided successors, the Khalifa. And he said, "To Mesiku, biha." And the rightly guided Khalifa, ayyul ahbab, of course, is uh, the first for Khalifa, first and foremost, and. There is ittifaq in the ummah about their khalifa, meaning Abu Bakr, wa Umar, wa Uthman, wa Ali, radiyallahu ta'anu majma'in. So that is the forms the Khulafa Rashidin, al Mahdiin, the rightly guided successors. Tamasiku biha, adhere to it, you know, adhere staunchly. To their their sunnah and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu uh, alaihi bite onto it, cling onto it with your molar teeth, and beware of newly innovated newly innovated matters. For verily, every newly invented matter is a bid'ah, and every bid'ah is misguided. And so we already talked about bid'ah that we're not talking about bid'ah lowly, meaning you know with these new devices and the phones. You know we have the phones and things like this. We're not talking about that. Maybe the bookshelves, but we're talking about uh, bid'ah in the religion, religious innovation, and things that lead to heresy and zandaka. And then the Sheikh mentioned the hadith, which we already mentioned, the hadith of iftarah, iftarakal to the Yahud ala ihtar wa sabayin firqa. You know, that the Jews were breaking this 70, uh, uh, 71 sects, and the Christians 72 sects, and, his, and my ummah 73 sects, all of them in the fire except one. Then he was asked, who are they, Ya Rasulullah? He said, those who are upon my sunnah, and the sunnah of the rightly guided uh, uh, and, and my companions. Ma ana alayhi wa sahabi. You know, what I'm upon and what my companions are upon. So again, that's evidence for what? That the Sahaba, we must follow the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala majma'in and love them and their minhaj and their methodology uh, in calling the kitab ilah wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and understanding it and practicing it and propagating it. Radiallahu ta'ala majma'in. And then the Shaykh mentioned, wa sharra hadahi al-firq الروافض والخوارج الذين خالفوا أصحاب محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم في قاعدهم ومناهجهم بل طعنوا فيهم وكفروا روافض الصحابة الكرام إلا نفر يسيرا. So the Sheikh said then he said and from that 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 hadith about iftirak 
where the Prophet Ali Salatu Salam said, If Tarakatil Yahuda Rita was a main firka, if Tarakatil Nasara Rita was a main was a main firka. Was it a fatariku hadi umala thalatha was a main firka? So the shahid here is that this ummah would break into 73 sects. So the Shaykh said uh, about this, he said, in the evil of those sects is the Ruafidah, the Ruafid, the, um, the Shia, the group of the Shia that, uh, you know, make takfir of the Sahaba and, uh, you know, and, and their, their other aspects of creed where they curse the Sahaba and accuse Aisha anha of zina, of adultery, and the other aspects of their creed, and you know, saying the Qur'an is not, uh, uh, has been tampered with, they don't believe in the Qur'an that we have, they have many mukhalifat, so they're not on the creed, they're not on the Sabila Mu'mineen, at all. Uh, so they're the evil, most evil of those groups that are mentioned, you know, falling under those groups. And the Khawarij also, as well, because the Khawarij, they made takfir, they rebelled against the Muslim leader, but they rebelled against the Sahaba and made takfir of the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala majma'in, and fought them. Uh, and they differed with the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in their, their aqidah, their creed, and their minhaj, their methodology. Even they, uh, moreover, they uh, cursed uh, so curse them, and they made takfir of them, as we mentioned. Well, kafara al-ruafid al-sahaba al-kiram. The ruafid, they, they made takfir of the sahaba, most of them, except for just a few. And then the sheikh mentions uh, a last fayda the sheikh mentions, because most of it is, is uh, most of the statements are statements we've already uh, spoke about one of the things he mentioned, which is a, a benefit uh, that Imam Baba Hari had mentioned, Rahimullah Taala, Rahmatullah Alay. He said uh, in the beginning, he said, "Wasas al di tubna alayhi al jamaa wa hum ashab Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Rahimahumullah ajma'in." Imam Baba Hari Rahmatullah he said that the foundation which the Jamaat is built upon is the Sahaba of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his companions. And then he said, Wa Rahimahumullah Ajma'in. He said, May Allah have mercy upon all of them. So Shaykh Rabi mentions as a, a benefit and, and points out something here. He said uh, that Imam Baba Hari said, May Allah have mercy made a dua for the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Uh, and he said that Ahl Sunnah has, has, uh, you know, united and made that a part of their, uh, one of their principles that they say, make Salat and Taslim upon the, the Anbiya, you know, alayhim salatu was salam. And that they make taradi upon the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in, by saying, may Allah be pleased with him. So this is, uh, so he's saying that a person should say, radiallahu anhu, that a person should say, may Allah be pleased with him. And that a person should say, may Allah wa tarahim, on the tabi'een. They should say, may Allah have mercy upon the tabi'een and those people who came after them. So this is why we say, uh, for the ulama that have died, rahimahumullah, may Allah have mercy upon them. And this is uh, uh, a principle that has become become a principle of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, and that they say, you know, may peace and blessings be upon the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, or the, anytime we mention the prophets, we say alayhi afdal salatu wasalam, or alayhi salatu wasalam, or like this, we make salat and salam upon prophets and messengers, alayhi afdal salatu wasalam. And the sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala, we say, uh, we say, may Allah have mercy upon them, uh, may Allah have mercy upon them, radiallahu ta'ala, uh, may Allah be pleased with them, radiallahu ta'ala, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, be pleased with them. And for those ulama after them, and scholars, and, and people who died amongst the believers, we say, may Allah have mercy upon them. 
And so this is uh, something the Sheikh pointed out, and something I want to point out as I just received news of it yesterday, that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we had a significant loss in the Ummah, uh, a great Alam, uh, Alam Ahl Sunnah, Sheikh Zaid Medkhali, is uh, Rahmatullah Alayhi, may Allah bless him with Jannah for uh, a great Alam of Sunnah, who was recently, actually, so many of his books had just recently come out uh, in the past year. So this is another loss for us and, and brings sadness to our hearts and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the, the ummah and bless us to benefit from the ulama while we still have ulama and especially when we still have some major scholars that we should try to benefit from them listening to their lectures and tapes if we can if, if we can sit with them then this is the best and if not at least listening to their tapes and if not if we don't have that ability then we should also try to listen to those people who are translating from them their works or translated works, their, their translated statements and books, especially studying why study their books that are translated, not just, uh, just quick things that are translated on the internet, uh, YouTube videos and so forth, but if we can go through some of their lessons, this is how you really build your religion, because otherwise from a short statement, you gain benefit, you gain fawai, you gain a fatwa, but you don't necessarily gain uh, the ta'seel and the ilm that you need if you're going to seek knowledge, that you need the foundation. The foundation comes from the books and from sitting with the scholars. It comes from the scholars and the books and you know, and from the universities and the maraqas of sunnah and places like this is where you get that ta'seel bi'idnillah. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself. And the shaitan was sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.